Gases regulate respiratory rate. The maximum amount of air the lungs can breathe in is known as the inspiratory reserve capacity. Similarly, the expiratory reserve capacity is the maximum amount of air the lungs can breathe out. There is also a small amount of air known as the residual volume, which cannot be breathed out and helps keep the lungs from collapsing. The tidal volume is the amount of air breathed in and out in one breath. Respiratory rate or ventilation has units of liters per minute and is determined by the formula respiratory rate equals tidal volume times frequency. Thus, the amount of air that lungs circulate per minute is the product of how much air is in each breath and how many breaths there are per minute. When respiratory rate increases, it is possible to recruit chest muscles to enhance the strength of the chest expansion and contraction for more forceful breaths and an increased tidal volume. However, increasing the frequency of breaths is also important in increasing ventilation. What causes an increase or decrease in respiratory rate? In the brainstem, both the pons and the medulla oblongata respond to chemical feedback to determine if respiratory rate needs to increase or decrease. In response to this feedback, the medulla oblongata has direct control over how frequently the phrenic nerve stimulates the diaphragm to contract. The chemical feedback to the brainstem is based on three factors carbon dioxide levels in the blood, pH of the blood, and oxygen levels in the blood. The reason carbon dioxide is regulated along with oxygen is because of how carbon dioxide levels affect the pH of the blood. The relationship between carbon dioxide and blood pH can be explained by the formula for carbonic acid. HCO3- plus H plus yields H2CO3, carbonic acid, which yields H2O and CO2. Carbonic acid is not usually in a high concentration in the blood as it breaks down easily. What it breaks down to is determined by the concentration of other factors. Water is readily abundant in the blood, and its concentration is not the determining factor in what carbonic acid breaks down to. Carbon dioxide levels can change greatly due to the metabolic state of the tissues. When carbon dioxide levels increase, the carbon dioxide will bond with water, forming carbonic acid, which breaks down to bicarbonate, HCO3-, and hydrogen ion. This results in an increase in hydrogen ion in the blood, increasing blood acidity, and decreasing blood pH. However, if carbon dioxide is removed from the blood through the lungs, the situation will reverse. Bicarbonate will bond with hydrogen ion, forming carbonic acid, which will break down to water and carbon dioxide. This will decrease hydrogen ion levels in the blood, increasing the pH and decreasing the acidity of the blood. Blood pH must be kept within a range of 6.8 to 8, and, on average, blood pH is around 7.35. Since carbon dioxide levels can directly affect the pH of the blood, the medulla oblongata and the pons monitor both pH and carbon dioxide levels and adjust respiratory rate accordingly to keep blood pH in a safe range. If bicarbonate levels in the blood increase, resulting in increased pH, it is necessary to retain some carbon dioxide by lowering respiratory rate. However, the more common occurrence that threatens blood pH is the large increase in carbon dioxide production that occurs in exercise. Respiratory rate must increase to remove the carbon dioxide from the blood and keep blood from getting too acidic. The pons and the medulla oblongata are able to monitor this through neuronal and humoral feedback. Neuronal feedback is provided by chemoreceptors in the aortic arch, that are able to detect levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. These chemoreceptors connect to the pons and medulla oblongata. Humoral feedback is provided by the pons and medulla oblongata monitoring the pH of cerebrospinal fluid, which is a reflection of blood pH. Additionally, the carotid bodies have chemoreceptors for oxygen and communicate oxygen levels to the brainstem. However, Oxygen levels do not affect blood pH. Thus, 
If carbon dioxide concentration is kept in a normal range, but oxygen concentration in the blood decreases, the brainstem will respond by increasing respiratory rate. However, if oxygen levels decrease and carbon dioxide levels simultaneously increase, there will be a greater increase in respiratory rate than if only oxygen levels decreased. While oxygen levels play an important role in determining respiratory rate, the greatest changes in respiratory rate occur when concentrations of both oxygen and carbon dioxide change. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel.